back now. Oh, yep. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, what would be the final round of uh, the ACC Championship on console. Sorry, PS5. <laughs> but uh, we do have another round for Division 2, obviously, Snetterton and the server crash that will be held next week. But for Division 1, it is the final round. Division 1 is later on. We'll go any further. I'm joined once again by Cody. Yes, thanks for having me again. I hope my audio is good this time. It's not dipping and doing stuff like it was last week. But I'm back. Yeah, you're back. And well, you'll be racing. You'll be. I really can't speak. Friday I couldn't speak either. You'll be racing in Division One. Yes. And I'll be racing in Division One as well. Just for some fun. My mic. What's wrong with my mic? I can hear you probably though, so I don't know. Jan saying my mic. What's wrong with my mic? It, it, oh, like I'm in the wind. Ah, right. Yeah, G is sitting outside on the, on the rooftop. Um, yeah, that's just my fan. It should be okay now. Uh, it should be okay now. But the Expo Lika, it was fine last time. I don't know why it's, it's not okay now. Uh, I have a feeling it's... Is it still bad? Or is it fine now? I can't really hear anything. I'm fine. No, I think it'll be fine for you because we have... Uh, I have no noise suppression on both, but I think it's better on this board. But Expo League are currently on provisional polls, 201.392. Uh, TFJ, uh, 5 tenths behind. Sayers in P3, they're 7 tenths behind. Currently on a lap. Yes, he is on a lap. Uh, EMD also on a lap coming up towards the final chicane. Uh, what can Sayers do here? Any improvement for him? He's going to come across the line very shortly. He's keeping that tight line to the pit wall. So he could be up for an improvement here. And he's going to cross the line now. Uh, no, no. Oh, oh, sorry. No, it yeah, was it is. Pole. pole. Yeah, it took a bit to register there. But, uh, pole. Provisional pole for Sayers. 201.122. And uh, I think that's the fastest he's done so far. Um, he did, yeah, I think that's the fastest he says he's done. Uh, have we still, still crackling? Really? Okay, what about now? Is it okay now? If not, then I, I'm not sure what to do. Let, let me know if it's, if it's okay now. Maybe I'll put my, uh, my fan on the other side. Well, Ophitega just came over the line, going up into P13. Still uh, some time to go, but he's 3.3 seconds off, so... Uh, it's still time to improve for him. Yeah, 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 Adam and Lee saying it's fine. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. But um, we'll just leave the fan off for now then, I guess. I'll turn it on later. Uh, but yeah, Overtaker currently P13. Uh, we have got the top two, say as an Expo Lico in the pits now. Uh, so it doesn't look like they'll be going out just yet. But if they do, they're going to be cutting it close. TFJ just slowing down here. I believe he's letting Windsor through. Windsor currently P19, 5.3 seconds off though at the moment. Still a lot of time to be found here, but he's approaching the final chicane. And is he going to use the curbs? No, he's going to completely miss them. He's going to take some of the second one, but really you can use... Uh, absolutely all of those curbs into the final chicane. Wins is going to cross the line. Is he on a lap or has he found any more time? Let's see as he crosses now. Uh, yes, he does. Up into P17 goes Windsor. Price in P18 about to cross the line here. You can see the marbles all over the, uh, the right-hand side of the track. But Price crosses the line. No improvement there for him. Still P18. King Quinn crosses the line. P16 there for King Quinn. Looks like he improved by about a second. That time round and uh, Sayers back out on track. Yeah, next car going going to cross the line is the 73 car, and that uh, is later Maxi in the uh, in the Nissan and the GTR. He didn't set a time just yet, so it will be his first. Yep, I know. time, and he is in P14. Yeah, I think that, that might be his first and his last. And to return the car to uh, to the pit who else is about to cross the line we've got the 112 car i think or they're entering the pits oh it's verano 
who is P10 currently two and a half seconds off as he crosses the line P7 there so good improvement that was about an eight tenth improvement there from Sperano and up into uh, P7 now but uh, Suzuka yeah, very I mean very long circuit so you'd expect the times to be a bit spaced out compared to your shorter circuit like we last week we had uh, Brands Hatch and the qualifying times there were really really close yeah, and now Acryl going across the line in P18 at the moment, and he moves up to P15. And he also is going to return it to the pit, so that's his squad over. Yep, that's his qualifying session done. We've got Moberg coming up towards the final corner now. Any more time? He's keeping out on track, so not into the pits. Just is he on a valid lap, though? Can we have a look? Uh, I believe I think he, is. he is. Yep, crosses the line now. No improvement though there for Moberg, so he's got one more chance here. And uh, coming into this round, the standings we'll have a look at in just a moment. Well, next over line is going to be EMD. EMD is currently in P6, and he doesn't improve as well. Yeah, still so a lot of drivers not improving. Yeah, I mean, look at the track temp and uh, ambient temp here. Track temp's not going to make a huge difference. It's mostly ambient temp that uh, affects the tyres. But yeah, very, very hot temperatures here. And uh, tire wear is going to be quite high, I believe. Let's yeah, see. probably it will be. But next over the line is Overtaker in P13. He is go. He's go is he going to improve? Yes, he does. He is, and he's going up into P11. Yeah. Still three point two point three seconds off there. Yeah. So currently, coming into this round, we've got Sayers leading the uh, the championship. Just eight points separating Sayers and TFJ. Uh, Say it's currently P1 in this qualifying session. TFJ down into P4. Edgar Monroy crosses the line. Up into P3 he goes. Just 5,000 slower than Expelika in P2. Very slow. Uh, very, very close between. I was going to say. It's not very slow. Very close between those two. Um, but yeah. TFJ 8 points behind. So Say is on 316 points. TFJ on uh, 308. Yaroslav in P3 and 267, so a whole 50 points behind there, but they do have one more round to go after this. Uh, EMD in P4 uh, missed the last two rounds. Well, no, actually missed Brands Hatch, sorry. Uh, Snetterton was the, uh, the server crash, so he's on 231 points. 85 points, though, behind the championship leader, Sayers. Yeah, top two into the pits now, so uh, that's pretty much their qualifying session over and TFJ is going up out of the final chicane he is five tenths up at the moment oh this is going to be close he gained a little bit more time so it's just over five tenths and he's going to be still before not still enough still before not enough to improve there for uh, for TFJ so we're starting on the second row but these top four very very close in this qualifying session I think we're going to have a good race a good battle uh, between them all, Steph Jake coming up to one uh, 130R now. What can he do? Is he on a lap, Cody? Do you know? Hey, yeah, he, he is, I believe. He is, yeah. Taking a bit of curb there to 130R. Not anymore, but and he's he run wide. It. Yep. That's what happens when you take the curb into 130R. Easily bounces you wide. But, oh, that's it for the qualifying session. Then Sayers taking pole. Expelika P2 and Edgar Monroy P3. We'll be back in just a moment. For the start of the race make sure to stick with us
Here we go alive again then. If you can hear any more crackling, please let me know. Uh, but we have the formation lap now here at Suzuka. It is a night race. We are at 8 p.m. here at Suzuka. A 45 minute race for uh, Division 2. We've got Melvin in the comments saying P1 for Philly. Yep, Phil on uh, Phil Sayers on P on pole. Uh, TFJ saying good evening everyone. Gonna give it my best today to keep the dream alive. I believe his dream is what to win the championship. End up in Division One probably. If he's allowed. If he's allowed, yeah, of course. Um, he's still quite young, isn't he? Is uh, TFJ so he has to get permission, I think, to uh, be able to race that late in the evening. But Just yeah. put puppy eyes on it, it always works. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a good, 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 uh, good shout. But yeah, night time here at Suzuka. It's going to be a bit more difficult for the drivers, more difficult to see as well, breaking points and whatnot. Um, but the the circuit is well lit in in areas, especially coming up towards the hairpin here. You've got quite a few. Uh, well, I say street lamps, but circuit lamps, or it's not really floodlights. Not really floodlights for this track, but yeah, there's enough lighting, wow. and the drivers have headlights as well. So, what more do you need? Well, I want to sit in the uh, Ferris wheel. That would be fun. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. It's a shame we can't do a free cam on console. Cause <laughs> that would be quite funny. Maybe uh, may just... maybe something to do for for PC next time that it's a super. <laughs> just go. Just go up and down. Yeah, <laughs> up and down the Ferris wheel, watching the racing going on. Yeah, it's not. That's a good idea. Uh, so is they turning off his lights for some odd reason? He's not going to be Maybe able to see. Maybe because Batman. Yeah, he's definitely not Batman though. He's going to struggle to see where he's going. Uh, in fact, we can go on board. Oh no, he's just flashing his lights. Ah, he knows he's on the broadcast. That's what it is. Just uh, weaving here. All oh, the drivers are going to be going side by side in just a moment. Probably now, I think they go side by side. Just before they reach 130R. And Expolika, I think, is going to give uh, Sayers quite a lot of trouble. Expolika, very quick driver. And uh, Edgar Monroy, likewise, in the Honda. The Honda, probably the quickest car on 1.8. So, it's up there, and it's going to cause some trouble. And you can't rule out uh, TFJ and P4 either. Although, he didn't have the best qualifying session here at Suzuka. Uh, P4 is still a decent place to start. Second row on the grid. And still well up towards the front. No, if he doesn't make any mistakes, or maybe if Sayers make a mistake, then he's writing convention for uh, for a podium. Of course, he always is. Yeah. And <laughs> the P4, but so he needs a good he needs a good start, and he the Essen is not known to uh, to be a good car to start. It's not, and I hope my mic's still not crackling, guys. If it is, once again, let me know. But we're about to get going here at Suzuka. We've got five lights. It's not like F1, though, but it's once the lights go green. And there we go, the green. Now, say is off to a good start. Expolika on the outside. Let's see if we can get a helicam here. Oh, that's a horrible helicam, but into turn one we go. Sayers holds on. Expolika still in P2. I've got Monroy looking down the inside into turn two, but isn't able to get that. And TFJ is possibly going to lose a position here to uh, Alex Rowe. They're going to be side by side into the S's now, and Alex Rowe backs out there sensibly. TFJ holds on to P4, but he's lost time to the leaders here. Alex Rowe keeping on the pressure. EMD in the background has dropped down the order. He's behind. Um... Behind Acre is that Acre or Yaroslav? Yeah, it's Acre. Yeah, so what on earth has happened there to EMD? He might have gone wide into uh, turn one. He's lost so many positions and they're side by side here up towards the Degners. Looks like EMD is going to get that done. And uh, there we go, EMD up a position. Let's just get rid of this for just a moment. There we go, that's better. In fact, I have to go yes. on this again. Hold on. Just uh, console things. There we go. Now it works again. Now I can change cameras. But yeah, say it's leading. The four. The four is still really close with um, TFJ. 
Oh, he will. It's back on Is he on the... No, he lost it. He's lost it? He Where? Dropped... He dropped it. He dropped back to... Where did... I he's think it's B he... six, seven? He's in front of Overtaker. No, he's behind Yaroslav in front of Overtaker. And oh, there's been a bit of contact. That's blind spot losing the rear there through Spoon. And oh, no, my God, they don't want to make this three wide or four wide going up to 130 yard. TFJ right in the mix here. This looks like it might end very badly. We're going uh, two abreast going into 130 yard. That's... Uh, I think Yaroslav just backing out that one ends up slightly wide. Overtaker and TFJ side by side here into the heavy braking zone for the chicane. And in fact, they all got through cleanly. So brilliant driving between the four of them. And uh, EMD is caught back up now to this pack. But uh, if you could have a look at the replay, see what happened to uh, TFJ. Did he lose it on uh, the inside curb of the hairpin or did he lose it through the Degnas? I think it was before the hairpin. Possibly the Deckners then. Yaroslav looking for a move down the inside into turn one on the blind spot. Blind spot defending well there. Quite an easy corner to defend through uh, though. But if you go deep on the brakes, end up wide. The switchback is absolutely brilliant into turn one. And uh, TFJ trying it around the outside. But oh, almost losing a position there to uh, Overtaker. And Overtaker getting the rear out ever so slightly. But look at this battle we've got going on. And Say is in the lead, pulling a second to Expolika now. Expolika. Oh, Overtaker's got the rear out. And that's it. He's spun round into the grass. Goes Overtaker. Um, don't think there's anything the drivers behind could have done to avoid that. They're already so, so close. And if EMD got into the brakes, well, that would have caused a bit of a pile up there. But that's what happens when you're battling so close and you lose the car. There's not much you can do. But Overtaker, where has he dropped down? Uh... He's dropping right down the order, but he's continuing. Daytime Dave, P20 at the moment. Uh, looks like he's got some damage on his car, so he's lost it early on in the race. But Overtaker down in last position now. Oh, he's lost the car again through Degner's. Looks like he ended up a bit wide on the Degner's. But we go back to the top three. Sayers, Expolika, Edgar Monroy. Still batting for position. And Alex Rowe not far off as well. Expolika slightly wide there on the exit of Spoon. And on. I just saw what happened to TFJ after the hairpin. It was after the hairpin. And uh, you have the long right hander. Oh, he took the and curve. He, just, he took the inside oh, curve. Oh, no. He was dreading that as well. He was he, he was dreading that even before, during the practice uh, throughout the week. He was mentioning that curve. And uh, I think he just focused on it too much and ended up uh, touching that curve on the inside. And that's what's caused uh, him to drop down to P. P9 here, Nine. still on the back of Yaroslav, can't get past yet. Yeah, and uh, Edgar Monroy is trying to to pressurize um, Expolika here in the, for P2. Yeah, and TFJ looking down the inside into turn one, no backs out of it, but causes Yaroslav to have a bit of a wiggle. But yeah, Expolika and uh, Edgar continuing to battle. They're allowing Sayers to pull away slightly or even keep that gap but Edgar now with the fastest step of the race uh, could you let us know what the fastest step is? Yes I can it's a 2014 2014 so decent race pace here for, uh, for Edgar Monroy in the Honda and TFJ really struggling to get past Yaroslav here Coming up yeah, Yaroslav um, is, is a good defender going going towards the Deknas he also taking a lot of curb and goes a bit wide there, but um, he, he kept it on the track and TFJ is within two tenths. Yeah, and uh, looking at Windsor, started, what was it guys, P17 he started, right? I think uh, Paul was saying in the chat. Uh, he's P12 already? Yeah, P12. Uh, oh no, he started, well he said up, up seven positions, so did he start? 21st? Did he start last? He's up to no, P12. No, awesome, gu awesome oh, Gumball. Gumball started yeah. uh, 12 last and he's in P13. So, wow. great start from both drivers. Both of these two, yeah. And Gumball's actually catching up now. He's uh, closing in on uh, Windsor here. The Aston Martin is a brilliant car around Suzuka as well. Really likes this track as well in terms of BOP. And, and uh, Edgar just Edgar. passed, um, oh, just passed Espolica, Espolica and is... they make contact. And oh no, oh, and Alex, Rowe. Alex Rowe. Yeah, I think Alex Rowe, uh, he had enough time to react to that. You saw Ex Expolika's had the rear out. 
no way to control his car, but I think Alex Rowe uh, had plenty of time to react to that. But now Expolica in a bit of trouble because that is, uh, who's that? That's Sperano side by side here coming into turn one. I don't think it's side by side just yet. And McLaren, I think it's a good car on this track. Yep, it's all right. It's not the best. Um, but Steph Jake, P6 in the Nissan. Yeah, best place Nissan at the moment. Yep, he absolutely loves that car, it seems. Where did he qualify? Let's have a look where he uh, qualified. Let's try and see. Steph Jake, oh, P8, so he's P8. moved up. Yeah, a couple of positions here this race so far. And uh, he's looking for P5 here in this race, but he's got to be careful. Blind spot on the back of him now, putting a lot of pressure on him early on here. And uh, we've got Yaroslav, TFJ and EMD all catching up to this battle. Who's lost the car? Uh, is that Sperano? Yes, he has. He's lost it through yeah, the Degnes. Yeah, Sperano someone else. Yeah, Sperano's lost the car through the Degnes. It's so easy. EM I think it was EMD who also lost it. Yep, he's now behind Acryl. And these, uh, these cars that don't handle the curves well. Obviously, we're still on 1.8 here on console. Um, so they completely don't handle the curves well, especially the Ferrari and the McLarens. Uh, yeah, they they can easily lose it through uh, the Degners. Now, awesome Gumball back onto uh, Windsor here, coming up towards Spoon. Windsor going slightly defensive, but Gumball looking for a move down the inside. No, Windsor covers him off. Go through Spoon now. This is an easy place to uh, to make a mistake and see that winds are really really wide on the exit of spoon well on the, on the second apex of spoon and that's not going to give him the best run but gumball not close enough and we don't recommend drivers going too wide into 130r although we have seen it before with uh yaroslav and i think it was was tfj yeah they made it work but not everyone is uh, going to be able to do the same. Looks like Maxi is on the back of King Quinn. Two Nissans once again, uh, back to back down into P15. In fact, that's Moberg yeah, as well. Yeah, and uh, TFJ finally getting past Yaroslav. Oh, but later, sorry. There was some contact. Later, Maxi's just lost it into the final corner. He's hit the pit wall. This is what we warn drivers about that curb on the exit of. Uh, of the uh, of the final corner really unsettles the car but yeah you were saying who got past who uh tfj got past yaroslav but there was some contact and tfj lost the position again uh, turn one. Uh, did, was that an overtake or did he leave or did he let yaroslav back through uh he went so wide yaroslav just passed him again and uh, okay again in the deck now tfj driving really aggressive over the curbs Sparks flying everywhere. So he's maybe trying a bit too hard at the moment than overdriving the car. Yeah, I'm sure those tires aren't going to be happy with him uh, either. But he's struggling to get past, so maybe getting a bit impatient now. Say is pulling a 3.2 second gap now to Edgar Monroy. Edgar has got some work to do to catch up to Sayers, but it's him still leading the race. He qualified in pole. And, of course, we still have a pit stop to go as well, so that can easily change things uh, in this race. EMD uh, was on the back of Acro, but he's lost even more time. I think he struggles through the Degners and the hairpin. Because it's showing two tenths, but he looks to Ooh, be like... Oh, just made a mistake. Oh, God. In uh, Just after 130R, he went in the on the grass on the left side. Oh, God, that's heavy damage. Is it? Yeah. Um, doesn't look uh, it's heavy. nice. Yeah, it's very it lights flickering as well. And Edgar Monroy is caught right up. What's that? A second and a half? Yeah, 1.4 seconds. Almost, almost got it right. But um, yeah, yeah. still four minutes to the pit window, I think. I'm sure so he's sort of filled drive it out. He's gonna have to. Well, I think he's gonna pit as soon as possible. He's gonna have to repair that damage. Look how much time he's losing here, and the amount of understeer he's probably got through the corners is. Uh, going to be absolutely horrible, especially going through 130i. He's probably going to have to brake heavily there to get the car turned in. Look at this. EMD is probably going to sail past him as if he's not even moving. And he's probably got a good chance here coming up towards the Deckless. But this is a very risky place to go for an overtake. Say he's going slightly defensive, but it's so narrow here. Breaking early to get the car turned in. And uh, Edgar not able to get past just yet. I think if Edgar just waits till the pits, 
he uh, should be able to get past but they can see Alex Rowe now catching up and Steph Jake also catching up there's Expolika oh Jake. sorry Expolika yeah 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 BMWs. Yeah, but this will be spicy for the championship because if Sayers needs to repair this damage, I don't know exactly how much it is. If it's this heavy, it would be more than a minute. And I think he um, he would end up right to back. I don't think it's going to be a minute. I think it's less than that, but... Still. Yeah, it doesn't look like... Wait, if you can go on board... Oh, actually... Yeah, his, his steering's not bent, so it's not suspension damage, it's just uh, body work there, and you can see the windscreen completely smashed up. But they're going side by side here through 130R, oh, this is going to oh. end up really badly there, and uh, Aiga Monroy trying for a move there, and oh my god, he's into the, both walls on the circuit, but that was always going to end up badly. Edgar Monroy chose the worst place to try and overtake. And uh, there we go, and we've got TFJ and Yaroslav going side by side up towards the chicane. Not able to get past an Edgar Monroy. Is he rejoining there? Uh, he's rejoined. Oh, they've both got damage now, but yeah. Sayers had the inside. Edgar Monroy tried round the outside of 130R. And I think he just caused that one himself, to be honest. Yeah, and uh, Sayers, always when you go on the inside, you always go a bit wide there, so. I think it's indeed on uh, Edgar Monroy, and he's instantly into the pits. Yep, yeah, I know. Uh, Lord Proud saying yes, it is over a minute of damage. But Edgar Monroy, he could have kept, surely could have kept going. No, his steering's bent. He couldn't have. Steering is bent. I'm not surprised after he hit both walls. And now Alex Rowe into uh, the race lead here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Alex Rowe being a very fast driver, he drove it as um, on PS4, I, be I believe. Yep. And uh, Sayers is now trying to defend heavily on um, Polika. Yeah, this isn't going to last long, I don't think. Uh, uh, Sayers is probably better off letting him through. He's going to have to repair that damage anyways. If he continues to battle, he's going to lose a bit of time here to uh, Expolika and the cars behind. You can see Steph Jake and Blindspot. Steph Jake, Blindspot, Yaroslav and TFJ all in a battle here as they exit the hairpin coming up towards Spoon. Now this is where we saw TFJ lose the car. Well, we didn't see him, but um, this is where he lost it previously. Yeah, my cameramen are a bit on holiday, I think, because they cannot focus on the car I select. Oh, really? <laughs> Oh, and now it's focusing on blind spot. Blind spot having a little bit of a better exit, but the mission is so quick in a straight line. Yeah, and Expolik has got past Sayers here. Done that before 130R, which is how you're meant to do it, not through 130R. But uh, as uh, Donatas is saying in the comments, um, someone missed a part where they explain, uh, explain to you that an overtake at 130R is a no-no zone. Yeah, we did actually explain that in the briefing, surprising, well, unsurprisingly, but uh, looks like blind spot defending from Yaroslav that he's uh, using, losing time now to Steph Jake. Steph Jake pulling away slightly with uh, the cars behind him battling, and TFJ really struggling here for, for pace. Yeah, and uh, blind spot even hit, hit uh, Yaroslav a bit. He lost. He had some overs here on the exit of the chicane. And uh, he and Yarosh uh, had a little bit of a, of a touch, but no harm, no foul here. It just, uh, they're still driving, and the pit window is now open. Yeah, so. so 15 minutes already done. Yeah, so we'll say as pit now on this lap that the pit window is open, I assume he would. That would probably be the best thing to do, otherwise, he's going to cons well, constantly lose. I'm lap after lap and you can see who's catching him now, Steph Jake, only two seconds behind and this pack behind him reeling him in, lap after lap, corner after corner even and uh, if he doesn't pit and repair this damage ASAP, I think he's going to drop right down the order even before the pit oh, window. Oh and contact oh. between, I think it was Blindspot and Steph Jake because I saw Steph Jake going uh, sideways uh, yeah. on through the hairpin. And TFJ just being patient there has uh, picked up a few positions as a result. Yaroslav likewise has picked up two positions here as well. So up into P4 goes Yaroslav. And then uh, TFJ trying uh, 
If you get closer to the back of Jaroslav at the moment. Yeah, and looking at, sorry, looking at Acro and EMD, they are fairly close, but not as close as uh, this group. Yeah, as you were saying. Yeah, and closing right up in, into the final chic in the final chicane with TFJ. They also have a bit of a bad accident. TFJ going for the undercut, diving in the pits, the same as a Sayer. Sayers because of damage. And a stop go 30 here for Price, who made, a, who made already a pit stop. Yeah, that's uh, TJ into the pits now as well. And uh, Sayers also into the pits. The uh, viewers asking what's happened to Windsor. Does he have damage? Uh, Lee, we can't get a replay on console. Um, we'd need two consoles for that. But no damage there for Windsor whatsoever. So I think he may have lost it on his own somewhere. He's down into P17 now. Uh... So yeah, he's made a mistake somewhere. I don't see any damage on the car whatsoever. Uh, I will check if I can find anything. Yeah, do have a look, but I uh, can't see can't see a thing there or wrong with uh, Windsor's car. Moberg on the back of King Quinn. Uh, later, Max, we saw hit the pit wall earlier on, so that's maybe what uh, you guys saw with a car. Hitting the pit wall, but uh, that's where he's picked up the damage. And surprisingly, he hasn't pitted yet, so he's continuing with that damage, but he's lost positions. He was battling with King Quinn earlier on, so he's lost quite a lot of time. And Price with that stop go 30 is uh, going to have to serve that soon. In fact, he's going to have to let the uh, I believe the lead cars pass here. Sperano approaching here, and Price is he moving up the way? Yes, he is. He's got uh, Gumball now. Gumball onto the grass. Very tricky place to uh, to get past there. I think uh, Gumball and a bit too much speed. But Price driving around quite slowly at the moment. And now uh, Gumball onto the gravel as well. It's not going to help his tyres. I think Price is definitely going to serve his. Oh. Is he going to serve his stop go 30 this lap? I assume he would. That's a shame for Price because he's going to be up the back of the grid. And I've just seen what happened to Windsor. Uh, on the final chicane, he went a bit too much over the curb and he spun it almost into the pit lane. Then he corrected the car, went a little bit backwards, and he collected someone, I think. Oh, Windsor collected oh, someone? He, no, Windsor didn't collect anyone. There was just a replay being funny again. Oh, right. So, uh, yeah, it was that exit curb then. It's really difficult. And Moberg yes. staying out. Um, still on the back of King Quinn Price into the pits now for a stop go 30. Edgar Monroy obviously repaired his damage before the pit window so he's got to do another pit stop here as well. Uh, looks like daytime Dave in P18 still driving around. Uh, what's happened to Sayers? Uh, oh yeah, he's repaired that damage, damage as well. Again. Yeah, down in P17. But what's the gap between Sayers and TFJ? It's not coming up for me at the moment. Ooh. Yeah, I think the gap is too big for us to say. Yeah, where is uh, TFJ on the circuit? Oh yeah, coming through the Isn't final it? corner. Wow, that is uh, a massive gap between the two. And this could be leaving it to the final round then. In terms of championship, Sayers is eight points ahead coming into this round. And it's yeah. going to be down towards Snetterton. Oh, Price with another stop go 30. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, poor Price. Well, that's not very nice. But... No, we did warn drivers in the briefing as well. Be careful the, of the pit the entry. Gap between, the gap between Sayers and TFJ is around 30 seconds. Yep. I've just seen it, 30 seconds. But we did say to the drive, it's so easy to speed into the pit here at Suzuka. You're exiting the final corner at quite high, high speeds, and then you've got to slow down just in time for for the pits. And, well, uh, Price, gone to serve a stop go 30. He's picked up another stop go 30 by trying to serve it. Uh, but it looks like he's going to have to make way for TFJ here. Ika Golik, E12 on the back of Maxi now. Uh, Ika Golik. Where did he qualify? I think he's dropped down slightly, or maybe he just hasn't had the pace 
Uh, so I'm pretty sure. 13. 13, okay, so he has gone upwards slightly. Currently in P2. Actually, I'm not sure because we've had quite a few drivers already pitting. So I think Ekogolik has dropped down the order, but no damage on his car. So. Uh, oh, and Gumball just lost it. Oh, and he collected. Uh, Windsor. Was it Windsor? Into the pits. Side by side, into the pits. Into the pits never works. No, luckily they. Uh, have they got any damage? Oh, uh, Gumball does, but I don't think Windsor yeah. does. No, nope. uh, Gumball lost it before. Ah, so he before. Got, he got the chicane and then uh, went into, into the pits. Yeah, that's some heavy damage on Gumball's car. Windsor now into the pits for his mandatory stop. Uh, Moberg still staying out on track. EMD has served his stop. He's got going now. Who was he battling with earlier? Was it. Well, I think he might come Steph out. Chase? Yeah, Steph Jake's still out on track, but EMD I think might be on his own for now. No, he's got blind spot behind him, so he's got past blind spot in the pits. Yeah, and Price back in the pits uh, for his second stop go. If he gets another one, I think he's uh, I think he's going to call it quits. <laughs> I think there will be a PlayStation flying out of out the, the window. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, let's see. I, I do hope he doesn't get another one. I can only hope. Uh, Ikagolik still on the back of Max and he's gone board here with Ikagolik as they go through Spoon. Well, let's see. Has Price got going yet? No, he hasn't. Oh, bit of a wiggle there from Ikagolik on the exit of Spoon. So easy to uh, get the rear end out. There we go, he's removed it. <laughs> Round of applause to, uh, for Price there. Uh, uh, looking at the top two, Alex Rowe and Expanica, three seconds is the gap between those two. Not much at all, considering we still have a pit stop to go as well. And there's quite a few drivers who are still yet to pit, with just six minutes left of the pit window to go. Yeah, a lot of the front runners need to pit. And it's for now it is uh, two BMWs, two Porsches in front. And now Steph Jake in the pit. Again, Quinn is in the pits. So we get more pit stops uh, by the minute. Uh, Lord Prayer saying Price said there's another car in his pit box. Oh. But he can st you can still pit even though there is. You can drive through them. There's no contact. Uh, contact is off in the pit lane on ACC. Well, that would be a cozy pit stop, I think. Yeah, I think on PC as well, uh, you can have drivers sharing a sharing a garage and sharing sharing a, a pit box as well. So yeah, the short tracks, it will be. Yeah, but... so it is pretty much normal. Uh, so I think Price made a mistake there, but that, that goes to show then he didn't pick up another stop go 30. Did he just continue out on track? Uh, Paul Mitchell saying uh, wins out in 15th. Good pit. Yep, still a lot of drivers yet to pit though, so he might drop down the order. But how far is he? Oh, in fact, he's in front of Sperano is Windsor. So it was quite a decent pit. And Gumble uh, is behind. Yeah, Gumble has repaired that damage, of course. Let's go back to Maxi. Uh, Ikagolik has got past later Maxi here. So the top seven still yet to serve their pit stop. Griffiths. Griffiths. Now into the pits. Oh, he's on the exit actually. And the and Mercedes. Blind spot lost. Oh, King Quinn lost it somewhere. He was on the grass just in in the just before the ashes even. And as he just made a pit stop, and I think he has damage again. Yeah, I'm not sure actually. Uh, doesn't look like it. Uh, no, it looks fine. Yeah, it looks fine. The dog is. The dog makes it hard to see for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, the Godzilla still uh, continues, but his tyres are going to be damaged. That's one thing. Later, Maxi and Nikogolik still batting. Will we see any of these two into the pits? I think we will now. Both pitting at the same time here. Can they get it stopped in time? Looks like they can. Oh, that was quite close there. But, uh, yeah, I think maybe Nikogolik was a bit too fast. I think not. Nah, he should be fine. Let's go back to Sperano and Windsor. P16, P17, still batting for position here. Looks like Windsor taking the middle of the track. Maybe trying to defend from Sperano, but he's not close enough. They're into the hairpin. 
on the exit. Oh, Sperano very wide there, missing the apex by a mile. That's not going to help him keeping up uh, with Windsor, but let's go on board. As I head up towards Spoon for yet another time, TFJ and Yaroslav now battling for position. TFJ ahead of Yaroslav after the pit stops. Yeah, I'm looking if, if uh, you can go it didn't go too fast. Though. Oh, he went way too fast. Did he actually? I think he did. We'll have to see as soon as that the orange one goes green. Uh, and he exits the pits. He exits the pits very soon. Is it stop going 30? No, he's lucky. Lucky then. Ooh. But uh, Windsor making so many mistakes here on this outlap. Oh, well, not on this outlap. Oh, on his. Oh, he's done the same. Oh, oh no, he did the same as what he did earlier. He hasn't learned, but luckily he's kept it out of the uh, the pit wall there, the separation from the track. And the pit lane, and I believe that's Alex Rowe now locking up into the pits. No, no, it's not. Who is? Who was it actually? Alex Rowe's already it, in the pits. Acryl's also off. Oh, I, oh it, it was reversing. Acryl. Yeah, it was Acryl. I heard some tires screeching there. Um, but there we go. Into the pits now. Oh, he's sped into the pits. That's, that's for sure. that was that was for sure speeding there. Hundred percent. I think that's a stop go thirty there for Acryl. That was way too fast into the pits, but. Yeah, that curb on the exit, very, very deadly. Especially for uh, for cars that can't handle. Cars. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, in the Mercedes, quite easy to take on 1.8. Um, on PC, it's pretty much fine, but on 1.8. But Monzo is just completely different, as we know. And you can't really take the curbs as well as you could on, uh, on PC. Yeah, not yeah. two minutes ago into this... Um pit stop window so i think expo Liga needs to pit this lap because the lap is longer than two minutes yep where is he on track oh he's coming through on the exit of spoon coming up towards 130r so yeah he has to pit this lap where will he come out on track uh tfj is 21 seconds behind alex throw that's a long time there that's a lot of time lost for for tfj but say is up into p7 now Al acryl uh, oh blind spot back into the pits oh he's got heavy damage just blind spot looks like he's lost the car somewhere again and uh say is up into p7 now but oh so, yep stop go 30 for acryl i think we uh think we saw that one coming oh and also expo Lika going really up oh no this could give but i think he will be fine you think so i do think so Yancey, I saw this, uh, his rain light on just before the line, so I think he made it. Yeah, Lord Prof saying he thinks he'll get a PC this year for sure. Oh yeah, that's good. Why does he, why does he have to? Yeah, because he, uh, he was always saying like, ooh, PC looks so good. So <laughs> that's he's true. Experienced. That's true. That's true, I think he does. But and it's the free cam, so he can watch everything. It's a whole different ball game there. I think it's much trickier on on uh, on PC. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, well, I'm sure he'll get used to it. It's definitely worth, definitely worth it. Expolica, let's see, will he get a stop go thirty? Acura is going to drop right down the order here. Well, he's going to lose loads of positions actually. You can see. P9 to P14, still very, very close here. Expolica, no, no stop go 30 there for him. Comes out, cuts the pit exit though. That might be a bit of a penalty there for him. Alex Rowe in P2. Uh, no, Alex Rowe in P1, ahead of Expolica. Yeah, and where? It stays Sainz. ahead. Sainz is still in P7 with the gap behind TFJ of. Uh, somewhere around 20 seconds, I think. Maybe more. Between. Say it's in TFJ. Uh. It's even more. I'm not sure. It won't. It won't come up. But it's only four seconds between Alex Rowe and Expolica. There we go. Acro into the pits. Gumball saying. Uh... Oh, Gumball's retired from the race.
and Acryl is now in the pits for a stop go Thursday. Hopefully, he didn't speed this time like Price did. But Alex Rose is uh, still 4.2 seconds ahead, clear of uh, Expo Lika. Yep, he is. And uh, we're Windsor now. Oh, actually, I don't know. Windsor might be able to get past that. I think he has got past. So, Windsor, yeah, up, yep. Yes. Yep, I'm into P15 now. Uh, look how much time he's lost because of that stop go 30. So much time. He's still standing. Yep. So, uh, he'll lose. Blind spot's too, too far back, I think. Yeah, yep. blind spot's too far back. We won't get that. The gap at the top two, between the top two coming down, down to four seconds. We've got Daytime Dave on the back of King Queen here, on board with Dave now. He's got a better, I thought he got a better exit. He's slightly pulling in, pulling up towards the uh, Nissan, but lifts off the throttle and brakes a bit earlier. Yeah, and both are really good on the exit of the, of the plane, as usually. Yeah, that, this Porsche is not going to be able to keep up with that Nissan on the straights so there. Look, it's already already pulled away. But interesting line there from uh, King Quinn. Not really using all of the track. Sp second part of Spoon here. Very easy to go wide. But a good exit for Daytime Dave. King Quinn, once again, he's just going to pull away here. Look at this. Already pulling away. Porsche. <laughs> or the old Even Porsche. The yeah, the old Porsche is no match for the... Uh, the Nissan, but he's braking heavily there through 130R. Don't need to do that. And Daytime Dave, yeah, he's gonna have to back off. There's no space there, but a good attempt from uh, Daytime Dave. Yeah, King Kun using a bit too much of the brakes through 130R. Bit of dust there, a bit of dirt being flung into the air. I think that was from later Maxi just up in front. That's where we saw Windsor lose the car. Earlier, the gap between the two really coming down here. 2.9 seconds. This could be close towards the end of the end of the race. There's only 11 minutes to go. This could be very close. Yeah, it can be. And I'm just looking at the lap times of Alex Rowe and Expelika. I think. Donatas, sorry, well Donatas, uh, Paul, Paul first, Paul was saying he's doing an Elton John, I'm still standing, Donatas saying someone turn on the sprinklers, to spice up the race a bit more, just like what happened in Monaco, yeah, I, I don't think we'll ruin anything for those who haven't actually watched F1, but oh, we have to go back to this battle, uh, King Queen, Daytime Dave, still just a tenth apart here, and wow, the gap between the top two down to 2.4 seconds. Yaroslav not far off of Steph Jake either. Steph Jake up to P4. Great performance from him so far. And uh, he will be commentating Div Division 1 after this. I'll be racing, well, you and I will be racing in Division 1. So, uh, yeah, Steph Jake's had a, a great result so far. Uh, Sperano on the back of Griffiths as well as they exit the hairpin. Let's go back yeah, to King Queen. Yeah, just have seen Alex Rowe was the last lap 1.6 seconds slower than Expo Liga. So he's losing a lot of time here. Yeah, I don't think he really had the pace of uh, of the front runners uh, this race. And that stop go 30 obviously hasn't helped him at all. But Daytime Dave struggling to get past King Quinn here. He's got so much more speed through 130R, but has to find a way through into... Uh, into the chicane and the exhaust in the Porsche absolutely lovely you can see it glowing there uh, on the back it looks it's like an extra tail light yeah it looks menacing uh, if you see it on the AMG as well you can see it through the sides Not sure if we can on ACC oh yeah we can there we go uh, it looks it looks better in real life you can you can just about see it there on the AMG but Sperano Right on the back of Griffiths here. Has he got to run into turn one? No, the gap's too big between those two. Stefcek and Yaroslav now have caught up to each other. And the gap between the top two coming down so, so quickly here in this race. Down to 1.8 seconds. Is it less than that now? No, it's still about 1.5, 1.8 seconds here. Back to Stefcek and Yaroslav. Still a decent size gap between the two, but Yaroslav is closing up. And daytime Dave glued to the rear bumper of this Godzilla can't find a way past though he's been struggling and they're losing time now because Moberg is catching up 
Yeah, Mobile doing a great job here in P13. So, so maybe we can make it a three three car battle here. With King Queen going a bit wide, but had a, still a faster exit. And King Quinn is hoping that Moberg will fight with Dayton Dave, so he has a little bit of breathing. Yeah, if, if he can't uh, pull away from them, I think his best bet is to back Dayton Dave up into Moberg, so they battle like you said. But yeah, that Nissan, you can hear the aggressive shifts on that Nissan there. It's the uh, shifting through the gears on that Nissan sounds really, really nice. Yeah, Paul saying shush, not seeing it yet. <laughs> yeah, we won't say anything. Um, Paul saying he loves Monaco. Yeah, uh, Monaco is a brilliant circuit. I mean, it's, it, it's so great to see how close the cars get to the walls. I mean, that's how you go quick at Monaco. The closer you are to the walls, the quicker you are. Um, but back to Yaroslav and Steph Jake, not able to get past is Yaroslav. I think the Porsches are going to be struggling on the straights. That's why I think Daytime Dave has been struggling to get past uh, King Quinn here. Alex Rowe has put his foot down now slightly. The gap is still one and a half seconds, so hasn't really come down to him. Oh no, it has. It's down to one second. I spoke too soon. You always speak too soon. I know. I have no idea why. It's down to one second. I think it's because times don't update. Because on, on, on PC so they update. Like. Yeah, on PC they update as soon as uh, well with with ACC TV they update their live updates. But on uh, on console it's yeah. And who has sector. been struggling a bit is TFJ because. I think Steph Jake and Jaroslav are both catching him because the gap is only 2.6 seconds. Yeah. And you see him go off. <coughs> what was that? <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> I think that was a car. Oh, God. Um, I hope. What, the, the noise? Yeah. A car? The bang. Well, outside? Like it. <laughs> yeah. A car crash or a door shutting? No, no, it's exhaust. Oh, exhaust! Right, right, right. I was going to say, that sounded not, that would have been a nasty car crash, but the top two, very, very close now. Expolico, the fastest lap of the race as well. Uh, what is it now? Is it, yeah, what is the fastest lap now from uh, Expolico? Fastest lap is uh, 2 minutes 1.3. Oh, so yeah, I think he improved by a tenth. To the previous fast step, which is a 2014, I think you said it was earlier. Yeah, and Steph Jake looks like he has some damage on that car, and he dropped back to P5 with EMD on the back of him. Or did he make a mistake? Did EMD make a. Uh... No, it's oh, Steph, Steph Jake. Jake. Yeah, yeah, he's two and a half seconds back to Yaroslav now. He definitely has made a mistake. And what are those lights flickering? Flickering? Yeah, they are. He's lost the car somewhere because he's got damage on the front now, and he's going to have to defend once again from EMD. But he's got the damage to deal with as well now. And back to the top two, Expolica, Alex Rowe. What can they do here? What can Expolica do here in the last five minutes of the race? Not much time left, and we've still got the three-car battle: King Quinn, Daytime Dave, and Moberg. And King Quinn is. Been driving amazingly here in his second stint, fending off both Porsches is not easy to do, and Griffiths as well. It's not been letting Sperano get past, but these two are even closer than they were before. Just separated by a couple, well, a bit more than a couple tenths now. It's about four, four or five tenths between the two. Yeah, five tenths, half a second there. It's back to EMD and Steph Jake. EMD is in front, up into P6. Uh, sorry, up into P5 goes EMD. Steph Jake down to P6. Daytime Dave and Kingpin still battling. Moberg still just waiting patiently here, but don't think patience is uh, the right thing here with just four minutes left to go. Expolica still unable to close that gap to Alex Rowe. In fact, Alex Rowe is now pulling away even more. Yeah, the gap being nine tenths here. So Alex Rowe finding some pace here in the last last two laps, or for the last two laps. But Expolica breaking a lot later, and Alex Rowe going really wide on the 
Caribbean and look how close Expoliga is getting to Alex Rowe. Yeah, really, up really close. Spoon curve now. Yeah, Expoliga's got the pace to get past, I think, but he's, he makes mistakes. We've seen this throughout the season. He, he gets close to the driver in front. There we go, another mistake for Expoliga. And maybe just pushing a bit too hard to try and uh, to try and get past. But back down to uh, oh, daytime Dave's got past head of Inquin. Yeah, unfortunate for Inquin. He was uh, doing a great job, but so B11 is still a good result. Now he needs to focus on Mo that Moba going past past him in the last three minutes of the race. Yeah, and looks like a bit of a mistake into turn one for Griffiths, but Sperano nowhere to go. Wasn't able to capitalize on that. Alex Rowe now fending off Expolica. This gap is coming down once again, five tenths. Seems like the last sector for Expolica is quicker, quicker than Alex Rowe's. I think you're able to check on the timing, timetables. Yeah, I think I am able to check. Uh, Expolica did a 26 8 in the last sector, and Alex Rowe did a 27 -8. Yeah, there you go. That's where Expolica is uh, able to catch up. King Quinn now fending off Moberg. Moberg with a bit of oversteer on the exit out of the hairpin. Sperano still unable to get past Griffiths. Look out, defensive Griffiths going, but he's gone wide here. And Sperano, he's got the inside line. I think he's going to get past. He's going to have the inside coming up towards Spoon. Yep, even before he's that, passed. he's already passed. Yep. Back to the top two we go. Two minutes left on the clock. Oh, are we going to see any position changes between these two? It's been dropping and changing here in terms of the gap. It goes from about five tenths up to about eight tenths. Expolica just unable to get close enough to Alex Rowe. Alex Rowe has been able to pick up the pace here now that Expolica has got under a second, well, within a second to uh, to Alex Rowe. Yep. And uh, one back marker in front of them. It's Windsor. I Windsor, think, yeah. yeah. Windsor in front of them. Griffiths still sticking with Sperano. Will Windsor? Oh, he won't move out the way he is. Not really any time to do so, but I think on the start finish straight, he may have to, or maybe even here now. Slightly wide there through 130. Oh, no, we do it on the start finish straight. But this could cause some issues here. And oh, Expolica very late. Uh, Alex Rowe very late in the brakes there. And uh, Windsor taking the. Uh, Escape route. Escape route, yeah. Well, that shows how close it was. And yeah, Winter... I think Windsor broke way too early for that uh, for that chicane. You can see how slow he was going compared to uh, Expolik and uh, Alex Rowe. But luckily, no harm caused there. But look how close these two are on the final lap now. This is all down to the wire here. Between yeah, Alex Rowe and Expolik. And the other driver will get past. Yeah, we've got Don Tass in the comments saying this track is an easy top five for me. Paul saying the complete opposite, a bottom five for, for him. It looks like Alex Rowe so far, keeping a good gap to, uh, to Expolica. EMD now on the back of Yaroslav. He's caught up. He's, he's had a good recovery drive as EMD. Up into P5. Yeah. And I'm looking um, for our championship. Uh, our championship leader, Sayers, is still in P7. With... And, oh, there's been, wait, wait, but there's been a contact between uh, Alex Rowe and Expolica. Expolica just nudging Alex, uh, Alex Rowe through the exit of the hairpin. But in fact, Expolica has lost time as a result. I think maybe Alex Rowe with a bad exit. I oh, was just trying to slow down Expolica there. But uh, yeah, you were saying standings. Yeah, for the standings, this will come in play for TFJ because he, I think he will take the lead of the yeah. championship now, and it will go to the final, to the final run. Yeah, I think uh, what is what was say is his worst finish. Mm, I have to check. Okay, while you check, Alex Rowe coming up towards the hair, uh, sorry, not the hairpin, the chicane now, and he's going to stay in front. Expolica too far back, but we've seen 
countless drivers drop it on the exit curb here for Alex Rowe. I don't think he's going to do that. He's going to stay well clear of that curb and rounds the final corner to finish P1 here at Suzuka. What a race from Alex Rowe and from Expert Liga. P1 and P2 here for both BMWs. TFJ is coming up towards the chicane now. It's going to finish P3 after starting P4. So still a good result there from TFJ. And I just checked the standings um, because the last, the worst position of Sayers is P23, the worst position of TFJ is P20. Yeah, Yaroslav. will be very close. Yeah, well, Yaroslav. Oh, AMD got Yaroslav. So AMD P4, mm. Yaroslav P5. But he's still happy with that result uh, by the looks of things. Steph Jake P6, he defended even with that damage. And uh, Say is only three and a half seconds behind in P7. Ika Golik is oh quite far back here. The rest of the grid, very far back actually. But obviously we've got P15 to P18, uh, or P15 to P19, all finishing. They were uh, pretty much a lap down to uh, to the leaders. Ika Golik coming up towards 130R. He's going to finish P8. Later Max is going to finish P9. Daytime Dave P10. King Quinn. P11, Mobag P12, Sperano P13, Griffiths P14, but we will wait for them all to finish so we can get the full, full results up as well. But uh, for those that are watching, we've got uh, Division 1 next as well. Uh, Paul Mitchell saying, is Say is trying to avoid D1? No, top 5 going to D1, Division 1, bottom 5 down towards Division 2. Still one more round for Division 2 as well, they've got to do Snetterton. Uh, as well. There we go. Daytime Dave P10, King Queen P11. Fending off Mobo. Brilliant defensive driving there from King Queen as well. Both the Nissan drivers, uh, well, all the Nissan drivers did very well here at Suzuka. Uh, Sperano P13 and Griffiths is going to cross the line in P14 there. So full results. Here they are. Alex Rowe P1, Expelika P2, and TFJ P3. But let's scroll down. There we go. There are your full results. So we'll be back for Division 1 in about 10 minutes 10 15 minutes uh, make sure to stay tuned and we'll see you then
Yeah, I, belie I believe my microphone was muted here for the first. Okay, so now actually back here. Good evening, everyone. As uh, we had some issues from my side, uh, welcome again to this qualifying session here with not a lot of drivers today for Division One. Uh, I was just talking about a part of the track and the qualifying itself, but I do, I do ha now have my mic sorted out. Some technical issues here. As we take a look at the order here, S and JB in first place with a 201.4. Pretty good time considering the temperatures around here, but he has quite a gap as well to Jago and both. But for after those top two with the big gaps, it does get quite close to each other for not with the top nine from position three to nine all being within a, a second of each other. If you look further down with Christie. There's not put in a valid, valid lap just yet. There's just five minutes, five and a half minutes to go down in the qualifying session. And G will be in the will not qualify for the session as he is not a full time division one driver, but he just did decide to hop in here just to fill up the grid a little bit more. As we now see Chris here coming towards the final chicane. Let's see if they can do something here. Looking pretty tidy through there. Just letting the getting the rear stepping out a little bit near the end here. Maybe that cost definitely cost some time. But we'll have to see how much it is. It will be uh, an invalid valid lap again. <laughs> Probably should have checked that beforehand as we'll now take a look at the next course line Luke. He was just going through spoon and onto the straight towards the legendary 130R a corner which can gain you quite some time if you dare to send it in hard enough but can also easily cost you a race if it will go wrong and of course the chat th thank you at least for helping me uh, take note of the mic being off and placing bets I'm not sure what the regulations are on betting around here but uh, so i'll just ignore it for now but as we take a look at luke here crossing the line from p5 was on pole just a couple of laps ago let's see what he can do no improvement for him sadly as we see the next driver coming up to get a lap done is actually zero here p6 in the mid in the mclaren which on pc of course a few days ago just got announced a uh, newer version which sadly here on console will have to wait for that a little bit but now rounding the final corner I'm trying to take as much speed from through that you came to get across the line here will it be an improvement yes to p3 only 1.1 seconds of Aston and just beating bones by three hundredths of a second it's we don't see what it's, it's quite often a pretty close case here. Christy now on the valid lap. Let's see if they can put in a time here using all the exit curve 
of, of, of the chicane, which can be quite risky here. Getting as close to the inside as possible to reduce this to the line. Let's see what time will it be. P3. Oh, just 5,000 behind Jago, which is not a lot. Now we see Bones crossing the line again. No improvement for him, sadly. And the, a bit further down, we'll take a look here at... Oh, where is it? Uh, let's take a look at, again at Luke here, who has dropped down to P7, which when you compare to him being on pole just at the start of the session, he'll probably be the last driver to get two laps in here from when he crosses the line. Or maybe, yeah, I believe now even the final laps will be starting from this point on, as Luke will be the first to be able to put down a final lap but first will he improve on this lap? no he won't so let will should have a pretty exciting final minutes of qualifying here G saying he will have to see he d doesn't think he'll be lapping the whole field well it's only one way to find out about that statement next up with Dennis crossing the line for his, his second to last attempt on a qualifying lap no, improving just a little, just jumping over Pyrrhus here as it enters his final lap. And the next one who will be crossing the line with an impossible valid lap will be not Essen, <laughs> that's the one. Will be Bones again, who should have enough time left to be able to complete another lap once more. Hoping, of course that this lap will be good enough at first to take that pole position which around here can be pretty important for, especially on the first lap through the assets where you can really defend your position very well uh, final hey, using going for the wide line here around the final corner maybe he's up for lap or his lap is good and not good enough yet but can he improve yes he can Go getting within the second of Aston and jumping over Xeron as he enters his final lap. But now we'll have to take a look at the front drivers, which will be Diego crossing the line now, just being able pro to ha get another lap. It's behind him. Let's first see, look, look at his improvement. Will he be able to take Paul? Not just yet, it will be decided. Just a little later, as now we'll take a look at the next drive across the line, which will be Don Etsk. Did he no, he did not improve sadly. As Luke, will he be able to improve on his final lap? No, he won't. Stay in P7. Next to cross the line will be Denzin and McLaren going through the final chicane here. Using a lot of the curb on the inside, lots on the outside, really pushing the McLaren to its limits. Will he be able to climb up a little bit more through the grid? Let's take a look as he crosses the line for PA just jumping over Thomas there with a pretty good time as well. If we have Pyrrhus now losing the car a bit on exit there, it will have cost him quite some time. The question will be will he be able to make it up? through the last no he will not be able to improve bucks following him just by will be able to improve up to p10 1.9 seconds behind the next driver to cross the line will be bones let's take a look at him as he goes through the final chicane break really hard there not taking a lot of curb there of course now it's taking a lot of curb on exit, making sure not to take the edge of it because it, it will be easy to spin you out. He's one second behind Aston at the moment. Will he be able to close the gap or even fight for pole position? No, he will not. As now Aston will cross the line, will be able to improve in his own time. Yes, he will just by a little bit. That could be the margin he needed to keep pole from Jago here. Was just going through the final corner, leaving it wide. And from here it's just a spur to the finish, trying to take the improvement with him. Will he improve? Yes, but just comes two tenths short. Wow, that was a close session. Uh, now with the final drive to cross the line, 
Tom Sack will he improve? Yes, he will improve the P6, and that will mean our grid for this race is ready. Aston lines up on pole, followed by Jago and Christie to the for the top three. Behind them, it will be Bones, Siron, Tom Sack, Oli, Luke, Dens, and Bucks rounding up the top ten. So, it's very exciting qualifying. The margins are always small here. So let's hope for an exciting race through the night. And welcome back everyone from this short break we're lining up here and we'll get for the formation lap starting in two minutes from now as you can see the, the temperatures have dropped dramatically from the change of time as well because it as you may have noticed it will be a night race of course this can be very interesting with temperatures dropping throughout the race possibly and of course the visibility being way lower will definitely get some drivers to maybe miss an apex here or there especially if you've got damage because with enough damage on the front you might even have an effect on your lights but of course everyone don't forget to cheer on your favorite driver see you do and we'll definitely be keeping an eye on G as he will move his way through the field and of course keep a lookout for the bet that has been placed here <laughs> they were saying in chat he did his fastest lap time around here so he's happy of course you can be 11 of course not the best of positions that would be on pole but everything is possible in a race here and with a good start you can easily make up positions left and right if you stay out of trouble which is always a crucial factor in a race like this because getting in trouble doesn't just mean losing positions but it could give, get you some pretty severe damage which will carry on through the race and of course there's a pit window here in this race and if you pit outside of it you still then have done your mandatory pit stop so you'll have to make a choose to either take the damage to the, to the pit window or repair the damage and lose quite a lot of time ten seconds. now 10 seconds until the formation lap will begin led of course by Aston JB and Audi trying to will, will be trying to defend this position through the first lap which for turns one and two can be quite difficult to overtake on the first lap as the flow is really good so you'll have to either clearly beat the driver in front of you on the start or be manage to stick with them through the SS and make a move later on in the lap but again the wall in chat as well cheering for Pirit and, and uh, Cody of course hoping to hold G up through the race it looks like someone has preferences you will have to definitely take a look through there as well as this can be a very exciting race around here of 
course these cars looking absolutely wonderful at night with the light ahead of them just slowly going through the S's this time around but the next time they'll be quite quite a lot faster and we may have already at this point have few drivers who has lost who have lost positions luckily for the start of the race everyone did remember to press drive it can be quite an issue sometimes and easy to forget if you may be even stuck in your setup menu as we now go through Decna 1 and Decna 2 nearing the one of the characteristics of the Suki Stroke here underneath the, the track itself one of the only tracks in the world really that loops around itself or underneath itself a pretty rare phenomenon especially at the point of the part of the track that goes above here being one, the entry to 130R so it's quite some iconic spots on this track all at one place including this hairpin which is one of the best places to go for a move around here especially with the map the fact that it's a very wide hairpin you do have to be careful though as the dive bombs are pretty easy to get tempted to do over here and it can end up really badly for both drivers involved they come up to school taking it slowly this time during an actual race pace being able to carry quite a lot of speed through here and really having to focus on the second part to get a good exit going up to 130R which generally speaking will be a corner where you can't overtake but with a good exit and a lot of overspeed you might be able to get it alongside and take a, if I say so myself, massive risk to make a move there which can end up in three ways, someone backing out, it's the smartest decision probably, uh, you becoming a hero with an amazing move or two cars into the wall or gravel. At least there will be a lot of runoff. As you can see here, now cars will be lining up in double file from this point on, preparing for the race start which will is just a chicane away. As we can slowly see the grid starting to form, dropping the pace to the seven, dropping the pace and trying to stay inside of the box. Slowly making the way here. Hoping of course everyone will make it through turn one in one piece. Well, as you can see the grid really closes a small ga gap forming further behind, but everyone will be able to catch up. Because in a couple of seconds the speed limit will be set to 70. So everyone should stay loaded if they don't want to drive for penalty. So here we go, the cars all lined up on the straight. Looking at the lights above here to turn green. In a few seconds from now, slowly creeping up. Green and it's green. green. Go, go, go. Let's see who gets a good start and who doesn't. Aston looks like he's able to defend his position there. Jago looking very close there. As Christie spins but manages to hold it really well. Apart from that, it looks like everyone has made it through turn one pretty cleanly. Except there's a big, big back behind here. Let's take a look at that. As apart from that, it looks like Aston still in the lead, followed by Jago for now. It's further towards the back, the cars really are cramped up. Dan is here leaving the small pack already. As now it, the race will really start to kick in after the S's here. Aston here still able to hang on, but Jago did manage to come way closer through Dekna 1 and 2 there. Only less than half a second behind here. Everyone still managing to make it cleanly for the first sector there. Now the hairpin, let's see. Oh, Eston loses it on exit there. That might, will cost him quite some positions if the others manage to take note of it. Let's see what will end up happening if he, he did manage to hang on P2, it seems. Which is great considering how big that slide was. We don't, it's really difficult to hold one of those, especially going through there and going near the grass. But I'll have to stay focused. 
and make sure to get in a rhythm as quickly as possible to not let uh, Jago take too big of a lead as we go through for 130R for the first time here wow it's if we see one running quite a bit wide there let's see uh, Thunderstrike did manage to make the move in going into the chicane let's see if everyone else is getting through oh as best as Pyrrhus here in quite the battle with G looking to profit of her going down the inside of Bessling and he's closing in on Pyrrhus as well as taking it further up the field again seeing if what's going on here the top two having quite the gap it's from that zero one here followed by his McLaren friend Bones Going to the S here, which can be quite tricky if you're in the dirty air of another car. It looks like everyone has survived lap one, but it doesn't mean that we're all in the clear just yet. Lap two can be just as chaotic with people mostly of the time taking more risk, as it looks like Ollie here manages is splitting up the McLaren's here and then Bentley, which is a car you don't see very often but the racing here is looking great so far everyone's still managing to stick close on each other with Aston here right on the back of Jago going for Spoon let's see if maybe we'll be able to get a good exit and get a good run through here it does look like it he might be able to go for a move into the chicane. As here through 130R, just one tenth behind Jago. It does look like the gap might be a little too big to go for a move there. As it looks like Bones had a big moment on exit there. We'll be fine, Jago for now here. It's looking to make the gap as big as possible. If you ask them, as the pressure can be devastating around here. One small mistake in Division 1 here, and it can cost you multiple positions. Taking a quite a wide line through turn 2 there. Now going through the S's, which is really tricky if you miss one apex like Jago did there, just taking a bit too much curb here and there can cause your car to bounce up a little bit. And now I'm actually here going towards the Degnas. Aston sticking close behind. Of course trying to look for a move whenever we can. The gap is just four tenths at this point. And a slightly bigger gap to Siron. Who has an even big gap to bones as the pack slowly starts to spread out a bit more the further space goes Jago very one on extra Aston really getting close on an area once again as a go up to Spoon he will be in slipstream he's looking for a move which will be the inside of Spoon here will we be able to make it stick or not they're going into a corner Jago on the outside will he be able to hang on not for now but might be able to get a better run here going back to Agnes, they're right on top of each other going up towards 130R in a bit will he be looking down inside here or going for the better exit for the chicane the more sen generally more sensible thing to do sending it in there taking as much track as possible but not being able to get close enough just yet might be able to go for a move up into turn 1 is quite difficult as well to be alongside the other driver quite far to be able to actually get a good move going as we'll see here he won't be able to get enough time on Aston and we'll also put in the fastest lap of the race and we'll be, we'll be very we'll be looking to try and extend and get as much as possible now 
because that is the thing you have to, so crucial around here. Just go exiting the access now. Still managing to hang on quite well here. With SMJ 4 tenths again, same gap, about the same gap from Aston to Jago when he made that move. Going into Spoon, we will have to take a look here as it looks like Luke is right on the bumper of Tomsek as well. Quite some small little battles going, going around the top from here to there. We might be looking for a better exit from the hairpin here as Tomsek does go very wide to the hairpin. I think he's probably profited off it in his exit speed. Just a bit further down here we have G just right in the back of Mitchell. G of course starting all the way from the back and already up into P9 with the fast map. Looking here to a better exit on the straight with the Mercedes of course. It's a really good straight on speed. Down the inside here, will he be able to hang on going into 130R? Yes, he will. Uh, but he spins out. Will he be able to pick up the wall? Just barely. He will ruin his tires, especially for the latter part of the race. That really is not a smart thing to do out <laughs> there. Just trying to make the move, but. Take the tidal line with more steering, but if you just get on the power on the wrong time and just take a little bit too much curb, can really unsettle the car quite a lot. So he will have lost a position with two positions with that. Back into P10 instead of P8. But the good part being that he managed to keep it out of the wall. So at least the car does not have any damage. Now if we go back here, Luke, who is. I believe it's going past on Sek even if it's going to, into, into turn 1 or 2 for the SS. I believe he managed to go by it in the P6, if we take a look at it now, yes he has. Of course the times are going for Sector. As, the, as we slowly see the driver settle into a rhythm, stands here followed closely by G. G who the tires will be on the hot side, maybe even have some flat spots, but he sh should be able to get past them without too many problems, as we're nearing the first tendons of the race, as someone has returned to pit, that will be Pirif who has returned to pit, I'm not very sure what happened there, but he's back in the pit lane, probably with damage or something that happened there, maybe. I'm not too sure. Someone might have to look. I take a look at something. I it's really interesting though. He was having a not his range wasn't too bad up to this point. But we'll have to see what happened there later on. For now, let's focus back on the race itself. The gap between the drivers all coming down to a, to more than a second even at some points. Slowly spreading out the field here. As G is close to behind Dan, so he managed to keep G behind for an entire lap. As Pyrrhus just hit the pit wall. What a shame. It's, the net, it's really, really easy to do that around here. That's the annoying part. But if you hit the pit wall, yeah, the damage can be really, really big. What a shame here for Pyrrhus. And having a pretty good race so far, but of course, going to entering the pit lane and is basically, at least at this point already, not giving quite some places up. Might be able to catch up if someone else returns to pit lane, but because in this division points are given to quite a lot of positions. Of course, trying to stay in there for, because every single point counts. Focus our attention back on the that is on track. You see, you see still close, close, closely behind them. Going through a wide entry of the hairpin. 
trying to get past the McLaren here. And the jet shares the sadness for Lord Spirit himself. Just, just taking a look down the inside of the spoon, not going for a move, but just showing that he is close enough, maybe even a thinking about the move, but now he has a good exit through there, he might be able to get it down through, through 130 r again. Last time he tried this on Mitchell, it did cost him, a, it did get him a spin, but he manages to get past and keep it straight for now. But they have holding it up good through this lap. As we can see the exhaust pipes burning red from the heat, and now we'll be looking to get back up to Mitchell. If we get off for over 4 seconds before he will be able to catch him as well as be looking at another previous Tonsek still managing to keep up with Luke here as Luke has a slight little moment there on entry it's turn 2 and does take a bit of a grass through turn 3 there now we'll be trying to again get in a rhythm to be sure to be together, get up because it can be so important to have a good rhythm around here now this battle is getting really spread out and the battles are not in an extremely high amount for, for now of course tire wear being quite important around here you don't want to get your tires in a bad state to the first part of the race because that could be detrimental to your race so now we have if we look back a bit for the down and we have a small battle going on there as well between testing and bucks so we get very close to each other here going for the hair and lost both quite far back compared to the rest of the pack but still every point counts for each position take it back back here at the Tomsak who's just going through 130R find Luke still kept being staying relatively close within a second but they aren't dropping either so both drivers being around the same pace for now, of course, as we see them going onto the final straight once more. Take a look back here, Bessling has been passed by Bucks, I believe. Yes, it has from the a couple of months ago. It looks like he might have, it does look like he has some damage he has some damage on the front of the car. Which of course will be cost some time. And indeed, li like Philip has pointed out in chat, Aston being able to pull quite the gap to Jago, who in his turn has managed to pull quite the gap to Tsir on the top three, all having been pretty spread out around here. Who we'll, we'll, will be looking to remain in their positions, possibly gaining on the car ahead with the real racing. Most of the time only starts in the second stint as now you still have the pit stops to come where you can gain or lose time. You have to think about just will you be going through early stop, trying to do an undercut or for a late one, overcutting the driver and maybe able to use those fresher tires in the end to make a move. And the gap still pretty much over a second between all the drivers here. Not a lot of action happening on the track at the moment. Except in these as just keeping keep, keeping keep, keeping up to make the gap bigger. Bigger. As here we take a look at G, who has managed to catch up to Mitchell with four seconds. Having come down to just two tenths. Which is an insane pace compared to the riders around him at this point. Will he 
when will he be able to make the move is the question. And he's right up on the Audi. Looking for the move into turn one here, but backing out as he just wasn't far far enough alongside to be able to make a move. Now the SS generally speaking, you go in a single file through here. Just with the flow switching sides that much, it's just basically impossible to go side by side and not lose a lot of time. Because these drivers will definitely be looking out for. As so, oh, Mitchell's gone wide on the grass through the careful, which has lost him the position to G. Luckily, it manages to keep the car straight and not lose any position to dense as well. Just losing a slight bit of time. It looks like someone has these stupid pretty weird. But let's you know, immediately put him in quite a big cap on Mitchell here. Looking towards his neck and new contact. Two a little less than two seconds off the road at this point. For P7 as he's now back in his position which he would have been hadn't he not spun spun out through the after making his move on Mitchell earlier this race from 130R. But that's yes, still increasing from Aston to Jago. Aston really putting in some fast, consistent laps through here. She now pair just a second behind Fonsec already, gaining one second through the, through the second sector alone. Of course, it's not just about gaining time. You have to be catching up to another driver is the easy part. Getting past can be really difficult, especially if the driver in front knows how to stay calm under pressure and defend well. I think turn one again. Looking to make a move through here as well. Quite the bit of a slide it seems through the first, second corner there, taking all the purple could use. Now staying close by, and of course, the dirty air having a slight effect here. Those big rear wings do help keep the car planted, but also will have less use when behind in the car. Now he's really gaining an exit here. Getting quite close, but of course the Tecno 1 not being a place to overtake another driver. He might be able to go for, for a move into the hairpin though with a good enough exit here. He is very close behind Tonsek here. Will he be able to go for it? No, he won't. He keeps his patience up as the race is indeed just started. Only one first way there. The pit window about to open as well, so strategy calls can come in to play really quickly now. Open. Let's see if there will be some drivers who go for an early stop, trying to undercut some drivers in front, or if people still find it a bit too early, of course, pit window lasting 20 minutes, so it's quite a lot of time to fit your pit stop in, depending on the moment your strategy. Now go, uh, into 130R, G still behind Consec, but now looking for a move around the outside of the chicane. Breaking just a bit later than Tomsek and managing to stay get in from even before the corner itself. And I will be looking to try and get a better exit to clear Tomsek fully after this trade. And looking to set his sights towards Luke for P6. Let's see, he does manage to get behind the cars. Still slowly but surely spreading out quite a lot for here. Gap probably being about two seconds on average between two drivers at this point. So that's it. As we have TFJ in chat here rooting for G to go faster. Of course, the bets being placed here should be very interesting to watch at this point. So keep your notebooks with you and uh, take note of everything happening and the strategy and 
we will have to see the results at the end of which people won and which people did not get as lucky as we have Bethany here into the pit lane we went into the pit lane here just missed out that first drive to stop and maybe he will be able to get, gain quite some time on his drivers with those fresh tires and of course the refueling being the uh, refueling having to be done as well which will cost you 25 seconds minimum 5 seconds for a tire change add it onto that and of course every second of damage will be added onto that if the driver chooses to do that as well tires of course being optional too Most of the drivers coming full spin again. Philip making a good point, it will get harder from now for the top 6. But the further up the grid you go, pretty logical that the drivers do get faster. And it will be more difficult to over overtake as here we are encountering traffic. Pirif having been left, left twice now from uh, being in the pit lane at the start. I believe it will be in here in the middle as well of this, these battles after making his pit stop quite early so he will this undercut strategy may have worked well but he will have to look, look, get like all the drivers who are one level ahead of him get past which will cost him quite some time as well maybe having made his pit stop a little bit too early but of course we'll have to see how that all unfolds in near the end of the race in the pit window. Now he's slowly closing on the loop here. And we have see Oli go quite right through there. The Jackman 2, just in time as he's still pretty close to him as well. Entering the hairpin now. Best one here, right in front of Luke, might be costing you some time here if he doesn't let him go by early enough, which can make the work easier for G. But of course, the same thing that happened to G, where Luke might be able to get past, uh, get past wrestling at a good point, but G might not be able to do that as well. And so G will be looking forward, of course, to make as much as possible with Aston still increasing the lead of five and a half seconds now which will be quite the gap to make up see so for the hour again using all the track available to get right up on the bumper of the BMW in front of him looking for a good exit here as Bestling seemed to have got the chicane there but at least went off quite a bit of course him being left car at this point will not be helping him at all. She going maybe for a dummy down the inside trying to get Luke to go for a different line but now go entering the SS. Who will be having to follow unless he manages to push Luke into a mistake. Which can be quite easy to make around here. Especially with someone with someone as far as the G behind you. Look of course for the position here. The first overstaking spot really that's coming up will be the hairpin. But it for the dive point it's pretty easy on move around dives, but you will really have to get have a good exit through deck number two or the driver ahead of you will have need to make a mistake. So let's see if they do. Not really, but it does it does go very wide there. Taking all the curve will you be able to make a move? Not yet. He might be able to go for a better exit, going to school, or will he go for his, at this point, nearly signature move into 130R? Will be the third driver that he will overtake that spot with. One of them being successful so far, the other one ending up a little less successful. Now it is also important, second part of Spoon. Really, you can see use all of the track that is available to get on the power as early as possible as you right go in the slipstream alongside Luke now will he be able to make it stick and go through 130R he is ahead of him of course he will have a tighter line using 
all of the track available once more. I'm managing to make a move stick for now. I'll check again, trying to get the gap now as big as possible. As G enters the top six. Holly not being too far ahead as well. As Xeron has stopped as well, entering the pit lane. Quite early as well, as it's the 13 minute mark left to go in the pit window. G3 seconds behind Oli crossing the line, who is right on, on the bumper, nearly of bones. This will be, this might get very interesting here. With bones in P3, Oli in P4 and G in P5 now after Xero make his pit stop. This could become a freeway battle which will of course cost them time. I'll go for the the deckness here. Bones a little moment on exit there. G going quite wide as well. Probably keeping it clean everywhere so far but not gaining on bones. Through that sector there. As you can see the temperature has dropped quite significantly already from the start of the race with two degrees which will be interesting for the pit stop with the tire pressure of course you will have to take note of the changing conditions and maybe take a look at the pressures you set at the start of the race and add it and maybe it will get very interesting with what will change how you will change it and by how much because the temperature might be dropping two degrees in the first 30 minutes it might be less coming for the minutes or it might even be more SG has now caught up to, to Oli the gap between these three drivers now around two seconds for all of them Luke as well managing to stick quite close to G so far two seconds he might be able to get close to these drivers as well as Bones has gone right for turn 2, will he be able to make stay ahead of G or not? As Oli does get past him, but G does as well. Bones make a slight mistake there, going into turn 2 and costing him 2 positions. And now he'll have to focus on staying with these drivers here, getting back into his rhythm. Otherwise, he might be able to. Uh, he might even get pressured from the loop behind him which could end up with some very exciting racing as G now uh, 3 tenths behind Oli looking to enter the top 3 the, well the provisional top 3 of course Seiwan has made his pit stop already but it hasn't and his Tonsek is in pit as well just like as Pir Lord Pirith is both looking at the halfway the mark, mark to get their pit stops done and sorted. Now looking towards Spoon here. She right on the bumper still of Holly. Might be able to go for a move, though he's quite far away from Bentley. Let's see what he will be able to do with this one very hard. Or if it will be the chicane just 3 tenths behind, a good line through one for you can get you quite far. Just it doesn't seem far enough for G for now. As our leader has got entered the pit lane. Jago as well, so the top two drivers both entering the pit lane. G entering as well. Followed bones entering two, which makes uh, the provisional race leader at this point, Oli, followed by Luke and Mitchell rounding up the current top 3. This is going to be very exciting towards the end, I believe. Four drivers and Mitchell in as well. The dance does not go in, they have quite with lots of drivers boxing at the halfway as close as possible to the halfway mark splitting the race in two stints as close as they can 
at which will cause some exciting racing going on from there as now the racing really starts at, at every single battle that's on track right now will be for position and it will quite spread out spread the field out quite a bit as Aston is now exiting pit lane but as the first of the people who have made their stop so be keeping an eye out for him and his position so now most of the field have entered his pit lane and uh, entered the pit lane only the top four hasn't we all of them quite the gaps in between them as we have a yellow flag on the main straight it seems it was I believe Tonsek who is not moving there for a second I'm not sure what may have happened there let's see maybe if there's any damage of some sort it doesn't seem like it I did see him stand still there, but I'm not sure what has happened there. This car looks fine. I will now be trying, of course, to get this back. As soon as possible, as Oli here entered the pit lane from the lead. Luke as well. Then is now in P3. The will be the first driver if he doesn't make a pit stop, but he does not make a pit stop. One of the last two drives to still make a stop out here. As we'll have to take a look at what Bucks his decision will be. Will he go into the pit lane as well? Yes, he will. So that means everyone up until this point has made their pit stop. And then has just six and a half minutes left to decide when he is going to make his mandatory pit stop. Otherwise it will be a 130 second penalty which is not worth a pit stop now, we'll also keep a look out where Oli, Luke and Bucks will be coming out of course Oli and Luke being just behind G the moment when they when entered the pit lane Aston managing to get past J of course as well as Oli is exiting the pit lane now let's take a look at that as he just managed to get out in front of G, so his overcut managing to work quite well, ending up in front of G again. Which will be making G quite angry, but of course, well, it on f no, it might be on fresher tires, but the tires still need a lap or two, a lap to get up the ideal temperatures and pressures. That's giving G an advantage here of maybe gun. We will be looking trying to get spots as soon as possible to regain that lost position through the pit lane. Both drivers really pushing out, trying to get that fourth or the fifth position. Of course, then still having to come into the pit lane. Who will be falling back quite a bit? It looks like he's entered the pit lane. Yes, he yeah. has. So after this moment, each and drive will have completed the mandatory pit stop. Thus, the the race will be for position every time. No strategies will be involved from here on out. G really taking all the cover, making the back of the Mercedes throw up some sparks. Of course, look amazing at night around here. Only defending his position by covering up the inside and then moving back to his late racing line. Full one for the R now entering the chicane. G still run behind him as we'll be looking at where Dance and Sport will be coming back out on track. As he's still in his box refueling and probably getting new tires as well got positions as G here round the outside turn one managed to make it stick still side by side oh and there's contact there's contact between the drivers all uh, both of them coming up just l maybe even a tad bit of damage with no spins luckily for the drivers 
but it did ma ma manage to give Oli the opportunity to defend this position once more. This then looks like he came back out in P8. Five seconds behind Luke and a bit of gap towards Mitchell. We will be looking here. It's G still trying to get past Oli here. After this play, it was 23 minutes to go. And G, of course, looking to get a base win still, but even after getting past Oli, it will be another about 18 seconds he'll need to make up, including overbase. Which means he sh he'll. Sh I guess he should be letting around a second left quick in Aston to be able to go for a move near the end. He did manage to make a move past Oli here, going through the hairpin. Now we'll have to keep our eyes on the gap further towards the front, maybe being able to get a move done as well as well. We'll be looking here, so at the moment that dance goes into the wall! What happened here? I was looking at the times and saw a battle was going, it looked like dance made a mistake going into the hairpin and straight into the wall, which let's see if we can see major damage or not. It didn't look like too big of an impact from the two frames we had on screen. Really a shame as we'll have to look at the time sheet to see how many positions she lost. Of course, Dance being in P8 before this. As there was quite some quite a lot of cars close there, so we'll have to take a look at what happened there. It looked like he even dropped back to P11, losing a solid three positions with just one corner. What a shame for Dance here. We stayed out quite late, managed to get back to P8, but now outside of the top 10. We're looking to make up those positions once more. And if here yeah, Oli still being followed by Bones, still quite close to each other. As G will have set aside a zero one at this point to try and still go for the race with the gap being around I would say 17 16 to 17 seconds still at I would say around a second a lap quicker would be the pace that she needs to fight for a win maybe near the end here which could end up being quite exciting and the race so be sure to stick around to the finish because you will never know what happens Aston just making the Captain J go bigger as much as he can, which will be a crucial part of the race for him. As well as can play heads up here, Philip, saying that Bones is closing as well, and he is really on quite the pace now. Really. Slowly but surely reeling in Ollie. Pit window is now closed. And the pit window has closed. Luckily, everyone has made their pit stops so far. So now the real race starts. Team J saying there was a crazy end to the Indy 500. Well, we're not watching that, but I will have to look into that after this race. Uh, for now, though, let's take a look here at the battle between Bones and Ollie as G is keeping an eye out on his timings. Three seconds behind on Xeron starting his lap. We'll keep a we'll keep a close eye on him as well. Now let's see going for the SS but still as Aston is still increasing the gap to Jago. She is slowly reading in Sion as well. Looking of course, this gap is now around 12, 14 seconds. Which he has gained quite a lot of time with 18 minutes left in this race. This could get quite exciting if it's again near the end. As Bones has really made up quite some time for the first sector this lap. Managing to gain a half a second through there alone. Of course, trying to 
slowly wheel and ollie but it's so difficult it can be so difficult to get past a driver around here and so then if you spoon and create exit here the key as this following part is very very fast entering 130 r as well most people will be having a small lift maybe a dab on the brakes most people will be going for lift and it's, really t and it's quite easy to go wide on exit there as we saw bonus really using all of the curves available but losing another half a second again through the second sector there all the bonus really matching each other's pace at this point so it looks like G has caught up to say one here and we will be looking of course to get past as soon as possible from here Jago being quite close as well but Jago is really took time it seems and is really really pushing once it wonder what happened to Cody yeah I have no idea to be honest <laughs> it, I believe he did have it looked like he had damage I'm not sure from what but I believe it happened near the start of the race as he have, has not qualified too well. He's probably got this little infant start and seems to just be off the pace. This is final race of the championship. Now we have G right on the tail of zero here at the end of spoon will he go for a move not yet choosing to stick behind the clan for now go to the now the exit of spoon the clan of zero just missing it and g go very very wide for there two wheels on the gravel will have cost him some time and might be might be one of the crucial little thing mistakes the, which you can't be making at this point if you want to fight for win the gap still being on 15 seconds slowly losing time towards SMGB now being behind Sierra so, going on to the main straight of course having a better exit it seems in the slipstream as well leaving quite a lot of room Zero not really defending it, down the inside goes G and he managed to make the mistake before it couldn't really there. Now, next up on the list will be Diego with a gap estimated 4.5 seconds. A couple of corners up the road. As if we look further down for now with Dance being quite close behind Bucks here. Maybe he will be able to close the gap even more. Straight away for the 10th position. Trying to make a move up into the top 10 here. Turn on to the ISS. You can gain quite some time with a good line. But it looks like that's really putting the pressure on Box here. They go around these twisty tricky little corners so be trying to stay as close as possible around here we will now go to the main mark and we get one lost quite some time near the end there even as the drivers are slowly gathering up with little packs He was TJ in the conversation from Bender. He was down the whole race indeed. So it's not been a really good round for Cody, sadly. But of course, not every round can be your best round, and sometimes round races like these do happen. It will be very annoying for him though that he has to end this championship. With a not worthy result for now. Of course, have 
Cole winner here, of course, in France at the moment. DJ wishing him some fun there, of course. Same for me. For now, let's still keep my eyes built on the battle. G slowly reeling in Jago, trying to get as close as possible at them to maybe be able to make a move near the end of the race, which seems to be more and more likely. As further we go into the race, but of course, Aston really pushing the, the gap. Slightly dropping again from Jago, nearly a second from a couple of laps back, which could turn out to maybe have worn out his tires a little bit too much. Of course, 12 minutes left in this race, might get very close near the end once more. But for now, we'll be looking at this battle. Yes, it looks like Bucks has had a big, big moment there, allowing Dance to go by. Big slide. Which of course can happen so easily if you take just a little bit too much curb around here. Especially for this SS. Now he will be looking to make a move back fast. As soon as possible as the pace was pretty matched throughout the race. So it will be quite difficult to catch up to them. Back up to them and even pass him in his final top 10 posi position. A lot of activity in the track currently, but except for Tonsak here, We're getting quite close to Mitchell as well. Philip as well. G got to be over a second faster every every minute now. Yeah, he at this point he he will definitely have to be as he's just past Jago. I completely missed that. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe Jago missed made a mistake with. 10 seconds left for 11 minutes. This can be getting very exciting here near the end. Of course, we've seen his pace. He's insanely fast, gaining it exactly about a second a lap. But of course, catching up again is the easy part. Especially with someone on Aston's pace right now, you will have to overtake as well. Gaining about a it's nearly a second in the first sector here TFJ saying 10 pounds is getting closer you can nearly smell it because you get in 10 minutes or a gap of 9 seconds you will find out whether you will be able to make it or not these pace of course being absolutely incredible throughout the whole race the only mistake you made being that little spin when attempting a move past Mitchell which at that point cost him 2 whole position having to overtake them again and still managing to probably have a really good shot at a race win here and then we'll see the, the time running for the second marker 8.4 it looks like G is on the pace of around 5 tenths to a second faster per, se per sector Gaining around a second through sector 1, around 5 tenths through sector 2. So let's now see how much time we gain for the chicane. And 1 for the R to possibly have a little idea of mine. 6.7. He gained a lot, a lot of time through there. <laughs> His pace is absolutely incredible right now. Aston will be trying to extend it to keep the gap as big as possible but it will be difficult because at this pace it will be looking like G, G might be able to catch Aston in about a lap or three maybe four which if you start catching about two minutes a lap will be eight minutes and we still have nine minutes to race at this pace G will get really close and for a move near the end Gaining another six tenths through the first sector. Of course, this will, the pace will be the same, and this might get, turn out an amazing battle near the end here. Of course, trying to push as much as Aston, trying to defend his face win. TFJ trying to win his ten pounds. <laughs> the, the pace is absolutely incredible here today.
We've had some great racing. Of course, not as much action as we usually see from this one. But of course, we don't have quite the full grid to say the least. For the amount of drives here, we've had an incredible race. G helping spice things up for sure. He's now entered the dinos with those five and a half seconds is to get to Aston. We keep a really close eye to him as he will be very close now at this point through the hair chicane. Last lap gaining quite some time as we can hear and Aston's Ali drive off in the distance as we're looking towards the straight now. Here we can see the gap now in real time and the distance. 5.4 seconds, not gaining a lot. TFJ, everyone dropped out because they are scared of G, which is a very fair reason. I would be scared too. <laughs> Of course, Aston here will be uh, trying to defend the hopes and dreams of the entirety of Division 1 from <laughs> being less scared of G about him starting last and in within one hour getting past everyone in the entire race from Division 1. Let's see it get now 4.9. It looks like G is starting to gain less and less but Asna's space is, is picking up a little bit <laughs> Chilo saying Asna got to be hearing the theme to, to Jaws which would be very appropriate for this moment here as of course G really getting closer and closer every corner of course Aston at some points on the longer straights will probably be taking a look in his mirrors and seeing those headlights of the Mercedes. We're getting just a bit closer every lap. And we have a our first real prediction for more specific thing. We want someone you know, from Colin G gonna win the race with a 2 a 3 seconds ahead of Aston. Our first real prediction coming in here. So of course if you want to take a look we get now 4.5 seconds. In about half a second per sector at this point. Get your final predictions in. 5 minutes 40 seconds to go uh, when G will be crossing the line. Which translates to about 3 laps left in this race. Gap being 4.5 seconds when crossing the line. It's looking more and more likely that this will be even closer than we thought at the beginning. Just, of course, taking a look at the bell here. TFJ, I need some money. G, come on. Everyone, we have some people in chat cheering on G. Cheering them on to gain the little tennis he needs in every sector. Because at this pace, it will be really difficult to catch him. 3.5 gaining him solid one second through the first sector. Look at this will be a really really close near the end. As we have as well a small battle seems like gonna Tonsack behind Mitchell as well. We're gonna take a little look at that. Of course going for the SS keeping an eye on the timing sheet of G of course will have to switch back to him the moment he gets close to Aston as the, the race lead is in danger here. So you know, seconds nearing the second timing mark for them but now Tonsek nearing the rear bumper of Mitchell through here. Wow the close as well only one ten separates them. As G is two and a half seconds behind Aston now. With two with after this, I believe two laps ago. Mitch still defend that P8 from all the way at the start of the race being a P8 as well. Really consistent from him. But he'll be trying to hang on to it now, the final couple of laps. As Aston G just crossing line, two seconds separating them for these final couple of laps. As 
also <laughs> have to switch back there at this moment. Let's see where they are just entering the St. Pauli SS. The distance really being close. Aston will be checking his mirrors at every single corner, hoping to maybe see those headlights disappear from a little mistake, but that being very unlikely. What he will be probably seeing is those headlights coming closer and closer to his car. Now they get 1.3 seconds. Dropping beneath the two second mark for the first time. Really getting close to second mark well. Two minutes 47 seconds to go. Switch G by one and a half second gap. Well, <laughs> the gap is at this point 1.3 seconds, so <laughs> it will be really close here. Of course after this we'll probably head into the final lap. G's pace being absolutely insane indeed. Now going through 130R, taking it two more times including this one. So we're we'll close to entering the final lap, let's take a look at the gap here. Going into 130R the gap being just 0.7 of a second. Now entering the chicane, looking for a good exit towards turn 1 and a good run. TJ thankful that G is most is a commentator and not a racer seeing these races. I think I can agree on that as well. But although when he races, it does make it very exciting. As we can see now, entering the final lap of the race. Being two tenths behind S, looking for a dummy maybe even to turn 1. Now going for a wide line through turn 2, will he be able to make it stick? right on the bumper here of Aston. Aston being in the lead of the race for the entirety of the one hour after his insane qualifying only losing position to Jago at the start regaining it and pulling a gap of 10 seconds will now be looking to defend his position from G for one lap. It will all come down to this a one hour race decided on one lap. Aston only losing and indeed at the start and the pit lane stops but for now, apart from that has a dominant race but will it be as dominant as G who started at the back of the grid fought his way to the front car by car had it nearly spun out and hit the wall at the start as well and now is right on the rear bumper of Aston going for the hairpin now heading down to spoon one final time let's see if you will get the capping so close it's nearly saying there seems to have happened a crash in front of here as well now this G sending it into spoon down the inside he does not meant to make a stick but will be looking towards an exit on 130 R as we see someone cutting across the grass in the background but let's keep looking at this now going up to the listener 130 R one final time Looking to defend the inside for the Aston, not close enough, let's see the gap is 0.1 seconds, time has run out. So it will be Race Venture into the final chicane. G looking for a move around the outside, switchback maybe. Going for the better exit right on the bumper here. It seems like Aston has managed to make it stick. Now they'll have a small little drag race towards the finish line. But it will be Aston. Who takes the race lead just 0.1 seconds ahead of G. <coughs> wow, what a finish of, a, of the race that was. Aston just barely hanging on to his P1 there. G closely behind Jago just finishing. Xeron here close in P3, running on the podium. Xeron and in P4, P5 will be for Bones. Oli here in the Bentley for P6, coming through the final corner as well. As he spun, he spun, that will mean Luke will take P6 here as Oli sends it across the track and loses a position on the line. What has happened here? There's now still a drag race towards the line here. Will be, this will get very close, will, who will be able to come out in front of this? What will happen here? Oli is still managing to hang on to the position for Tonsek, but Mitchell does manage to get past Oli. What a finish this was! 
as Dance gets up into P10 and Boxer finishes P11, but wow, that, uh, that finish was extremely spectacular. I don't think we'll ever see something like that for a ch championship finale like this. What a finish and what a result for most of the drivers here as of course fifth managing had to hang on the final lap pedal with G and then Oli just making a mistake through the final corner costing him two positions and Mitch just being able to pass Oli and Tonsek just not that the gaps are so so small of course Tonsek just put three thousands behind Oli across the line congrats to everyone it was some amazing racing here near the end, especially. Oh, and uh, I completely missed it, but the Christie seems to have DNF'd. I missed that point. Oh, <laughs> but light, go, go, go. congratulations to everyone performing. And of course, this will mean the end of our stream tonight. Congratulations to the podium finishers, Aston, G, and followed, of course, by R1 and o Jago. And uh, of course, thanks for watching everyone in chat, and uh, we'll see you right later for the final few rounds, as this was the end of the championship from Season 9 from The Simzone.